Amen, Rob. Do you know that the Lord, and it's amazing to think that, the, that we've just sang about the songs and we were praying it in the prayer meeting, but the Lord is constantly speaking to us uh, to not stay dormant or stationary, saying something other than that. He's always wanting us to keep moving forward in our lives. In that challenge, sometimes when you just get comfortable and then the Lord says, I need you to do something else. I need you to do another thing. You know, we're all called to move forward in our lives and not get comfortable. Who likes to get comfortable in their bed at night? You get that blanket over you. Oh, it just feels so good. But that's not what the feeling, I know, I know, but you'd want to stay in your bed all day long and that's not what the Lord's got for you because we'd miss the blessing from your life and I want your blessing as well as you need mine. Amen. Uh, and as I've been on holiday for the last three weeks, uh, I would have hated for this church to stop whilst I was on a break. But praise God, that didn't happen. The church has to keep moving forward because it's not reliant on Rob MacArthur. God doesn't just need Rob MacArthur. He needs all of us to be a part of his plan. Amen? Amen. And, and in fact, it, the church just managed fine without me. Isn't that amazing? Um, hallelujah. <laughs> we have to keep moving forward in God's, uh, with God because if we stop, He is still moving and then we miss the new thing that He's doing. Let me say that there are some churches, denominations that are in that place right now. And this church will never do that. It's as uncomfortable and as maybe strange it may feel, we will always keep moving forward. We have to. This year, we're going to celebrate 40 years of faith. Well, it's kind of past, but we were a bit busy last year, so we're putting a, a marker in April, and from the 16th to the 23rd, we're going to have a week-long uh, celebration of our 40-year anniversary, 40 years of faith. Praise God. Aren't we thankful for those that have went before us in faith and said, we are taking ground in this area. Amen. 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 I'm thankful for that, and in another 40 years' time, when we celebrate 80 years, um, we'll be saying the same again, praise God for 80 years of faith. Come on, we have to keep going, church. <laughs> Do I say amen to that? <laughs> yeah, like, this, this is, I, listen, I come back from our first week, behave yourselves, would you? <laughs> If I had to say to you to sit on a seat, David, for a whole month and don't move, and then you get up off the seat, how's it going to go when you get up off the seat? You're going to be a bit stiff, aren't you? It's going to be a bit sore. In fact, some of you say, don't worry about a whole month. I just got up this morning and, ah, <laughs> got in my bed this morning. It was a wee bit too kind. <laughs> tough. <laughs> a little bit tough. It was hard maybe for some of us. And that's why God wants us to keep moving. Because if we stay stagnant, if we stay in the same place, we become stiff and it becomes harder for us to keep moving with the Lord. Looking for opportunities to keep moving forward. In fact, I, I, I've got a, a prophetic word uh, for you this morning. And the Lord says this, don't get comfortable. Don't get comfortable comfortable. In fact, the Lord would say, get into your ready position. What is your ready position? Well, it's out of Hebrews 12, 1, which is almost like this. I'm, I'm leaning forward. I'm leaning into what God has asked me uh, to do, and I'm listening for that whistle. I'm listening for that voice from God because I'm leaning in. I want to be ready to move. But sometimes, as, as Paul was saying, as we present our things from our past, and, but we sometimes want to hold them, and they're so weighty that we can't move forward. They're holding us back. Have you ever thought about it for a second to think, why do I hold that stuff? Why do I hold on to it? Because it's easier to hold on to the things that you know than let go into that maybe scary place of the unknown. But let me say to you this morning, get rid of the weights that can so easily entangle your mind and your heart and get ready for what God is going to do this year. Listen, God needs you this year. He needs you to be ready this year. 
I need you to be ready this year because I need people to come and help us with Revive Scotland because it's all based on people who say yes to God and come and help us, amen? There's pictures from last year for when we went to seven locations in the north. And the Lord said this to me uh, several years ago, I'm handing you the ball, now what are you going to do with it? That ball had the word revival on it, and the Lord said to you this morning, are you ready to receive that ball because I've got something for you to do as well? Well, oh, don't get too excited, church, dear me. <laughs> wow. I'm excited. I'm really excited about uh, the word that God is speaking about. Don't get comfortable in your faith. Get ready to move forward. Well, what is the Lord saying to us this year, 2023? It is Isaiah 61. Last year it was Isaiah 60, arise and shine. This year the Lord says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon who? Say me. Say me. I know it's on me, so you're going to say you, but uh, say me. Why? Because he has anointed you to preach good tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, that the blind eyes might see. This is what God has for us. And 13 years ago, that's what God had for me. I was blind in all my mess, and, and then guess what? I was able to see when I gave my heart to Him. And He's got that for each one of us as well. Amen? So the kingdom of God is always advancing. The question is, are we? What ground are we taking in our own lives, and what ground are we taking in the church? So today I'm going to start a four-week uh, mini-series, uh, and, and uh, by the time that I'm finished this four-week series, my hope is that God will have shown us a clear path to move forward um, in, this, in this next year. And I might I just say that in my recordings from today, the preaching will be online, so if you're like, I'm going to miss one of the four, don't worry, it will be on YouTube, you'll be able to catch that there. So if you want a sermon title, you're taking notes today, the sermon title is Move, uh, sorry, the series title is Move, this four-week series title, uh, and the sermon title for today is Going From Struggling to Surplus. Going From Struggling to surplus. Some of you are still in that place of struggling, and you're desperate to get out of it. Some of you are thinking, I'm in the surplus, praise the Lord. But some of you are exactly in that middle place of saying, I've been struggling. I can see the, the, the favor coming, but I'm not quite there yet. Where are you this morning, church? Where are you in that struggling to surplus? Um, and let me just say on my mini-series title of Move, just in case you're reading between the lines and hearing something that I have not said, I'm not telling you to move house. I'm not telling you to move church, please, unless you're a guest with us, and I'm happy for you to move church. <laughs> that was a joke, okay, just in case you didn't, you're like, do I laugh at that or not? You're okay to laugh, it's okay. This is church, it should be enjoyed, not endured, amen. If you would turn with me to 2 Kings, uh, I want to read from chapter 4, verses 1 to 7. It will be on the screen behind me as well if you haven't got a Bible, uh, but if you do, please do turn with me to 2 Kings, chapter 4, verses uh, 1 to 7. It says in verse 1, a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elijah, saying, your, servants, uh, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord, and the creditor is coming to take my two sons to be his slaves. Just, I know that this is words on a screen or on your page, but just think about what this woman's going through at this time. So Elijah said to her, what shall I do for you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? And she said, your maidservant has nothing in the house but a jar of oil. Then he said, go borrow vessels from everywhere, from all your neighbors, empty vessels. Do not gather just a few. Get as many as you can. Knock on every door that you can and get as many vessels, empty jars. And when you have come in, you shall shut the door behind you and your sons, then pour it into all those vessels and set aside the full ones. So when she went from him and shut the door behind her and her sons who brought the vessels to her, and she poured it out. Now it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said to her sons, 
bring me another vessel. Come on, we've got more to give. Bring me another vessel. Where's the rest of them? And they said to her, there is not another vessel. So the oil ceased. Then she came and told the man of God and said to him, go, and he said to her, go sell the oil and pay your debts. And you and your sons live on the rest. This week, I really want to talk to us uh, about those that are maybe struggling in their finances. And this is really a message on finances. You're welcome the first week back. Um, but being able to move forward from struggling to surplus in our uh, finances. Now, I know we've been doing the declaration um, uh, and jobs and better jobs. And I heard you add a little bit for the kingdom, for his kingdom. Was that what we said a couple of weeks ago? Because uh, it is for the kingdom of God. But it's not just a nice mantra. Yeah. It's a belief system that the Bible is true and it says, and what it says in the Bible, we can enact. So we have faith to believe God in our finances. Amen. And I'll share some of that with you today in, in our own personal finances. Um, and I'm sure that we can all agree that if there was ever a time to speak about struggling in our finances, it's right in this moment. As people are struggling with bills and debt and all the other stuff that's going on because of the increased uh, uh, gas and electric bills, it's very, very difficult for people just now. How can we even begin to afford to pay our bills and our, uh, and, and, and our energy bills and buy food for our family? And then what we see is that our food bank, which was started 15 years ago uh, by Wendy Boothroyd, who did a, a marvelous job of uh, starting that off in Mary Kitchen, has come alongside over many years and now taken the lead on that. Um, and we see not just people who are struggling with addiction, which has been a historical um, a fact of who has received from the food bank, but it's actually people who have two jobs, working families who are still having to come to the food bank for food. It blows my mind to even think about that, but I do understand it. I do understand it. And what a blessing it is to have the food bank there to be able to provide for our community. Amen. It's fantastic to see that. And, and, and most weeks we have in the past put an offering out or we put a basket around. It's maybe been a yellow one or a purple one, whatever the color was, but we put it out and you give generously. We say a pound to the poor or give whatever you can towards the food bank. Um, and uh, it's, in some points, the food bank fund has been very, very low. And I forgot to show you this before I went off. In fact, it was Christmas time that this came in. Uh, this... Um, just a small check here. Uh, uh, this came from a, um, a fundraiser day um, just before Christmas from the Royal Terlaire Golf Club in Macduff, um, and they gave over £2,000 towards the food bank. Isn't that incredible? It's absolutely amazing to see that come in. I don't know how do I, how do I check this uh, Alison, do you, do you scan it or something? <laughs> no, we have, we've already dealt with all that, but just so glad to see that people are given to the food bank, and that's why we don't receive an offering just now in the church, because we don't need to, because we went from struggling to surplus in the food bank fund. Praise God. Now, that might means we, doesn't mean that we take our eyes off of it and think we're okay there. No, we keep checking it. We keep checking it. But our community user people and a wider community in Bam Bam Duff have been so generous in their giving towards the food bank and we are very, very thankful for that. Amen. Praise God. God. My goal today is to help us as a people see that God is able to bless us with abundance. Can you just say that word with me, abundance? Say it again. Say it with a smile on your face. Abundance. Abundance is like a natural smile when you say abundance. I know that when God blesses us with abundance, His face and His countenance is smiling back towards us because He loves to bless His children. It doesn't matter what age you are. He is uh, still your dad. Amen. And we read in this story here about the widow who had lost her husband and she was facing uh, the loss of her sons due to the debts that her husband had built up. Let me just put a pin in that and say, debt isn't a good thing. 
If you're struggling with debt just now, I would really encourage you to speak to Yvonne Ewan. <laughs> Sorry, Yvonne, I forgot to tell you about that part. Um, she's going to have a little table. She'll have a little cap on and she'll have a little <laughs> typewriter out. Um, but when we started coming to the church years ago, we, uh, I wasn't really good at stewarding our finances as the husband of our house. And I remember uh, sitting in our old house and Yvonne sitting at her kitchen table and she's like, let me see what you spend and, and, and let me see your, your bank statements. And I'm like, I really don't want to show her those things because then she really knows what I spend uh, my money on. And she says, well, you don't need to be buying that anymore. You don't need to be doing that anymore. And I'm like, okay. And we were able to get ourselves with her support and the blessing of God, we got ourselves debt free. Praise the Lord. Now, we still have a mortgage and things like that. Um, I'm, I'd be delighted to see that go as well as most of us would. Um, but we didn't have any uh, debt with regards to, you know, credit cards and things like that. What a free and place to be, church. If you've got debt or you're thinking about taking out a loan, don't do it. Don't do it. It's not a good thing. It ties you down. Amen. Yeah. Uh, but I love in this story uh, that in her desperation, what does the woman do? She sought God. She sought God and he blessed her abundantly. And in, in my first point today, church, for us is uh, she was in a desperate situation. Desperate situations force us into uh, a new way of thinking. The widow was facing loads of challenges that led her to this desperate situation. Let me just outline them to you. She lost her husband, which means she also lost her provision. Uh, she had unpaid debts from her husband, the imminent loss of her children, no financial reserves. She had nothing in the house apart from a little, teeny, tiny, little jar of oil. That's all I've got. Got nothing else. And what's God going to do with a little, tiny jar of oil? Everything. Everything. And in an instant... <laughs> Her situation changed just with a little jar of oil. Can I say to you today, and I can't remember if I've put this in my notes, so uh, I'm, I'm kind of going off track a little bit. Can I just say to you uh, today, don't think with your natural mind about how God can resolve a situation. Listen, I'm telling you something. I've thought time and time again, how are you going to get me out of this, God? I've done this. What are you going to do? And it's never the way that I think he's going to do it. It's always a better way. Why? Because he's got the big picture. I've only got this little, like, minuscule way of seeing things. And he's like, no, no, that's not what we're going to do, Rob. Thanks for praying for this, but actually I'll do it this way instead. God's ways are always better ways. Amen. I mean, the strain and stress that this woman must have been going through would have been horrible. Have you ever been in a situation, I'm speaking about finances today, but this could be across the board of your life that you've ever felt that you've been backed into a corner and you felt that strain and stress and you don't know how to resolve it. The anxiety and the fear come in. Amen? Anyone feel that before? You ever felt that anxiety and that fear uh, in your life as you've been presented with a situation that you've had to work through? It's horrible. I remember uh, we, we lived in America for a year, and I remember whilst we were uh, there um, that, uh, I mean, and we had people in this congregation here today that gave very kindly and generously to us whilst we lived there. But what the generous way of giving and what we had to spend didn't match up, so we were without sometimes. Um, and that, that was okay in one sense, but as the, as the dad, and I wasn't allowed to work because we didn't have the visa for working, I still had my three kids to provide for, I still had my wife to provide for, and I felt the pressure of that. And I'm thinking, how are we going to do this? And I remember one day specifically, we were talking about this the other day, just reflecting on it. Uh, one day specifically, we had no money. We didn't have enough to buy food for our supper. And, and, I, and we could have probably sent out about four or five texts and we would have gotten that. And I'm like, no, let's, let's together agree that God will do something. And you know what happens? We get a knock at the door and some kind congregation member had made this lovely baked meal and presented it to us and says, I feel like God told me to come with this to you. 
well, how would I have resolved it? I would have done it by man's ways. I'd have sent some texts. I'd have maybe got my guitar and went out in the street corner and sung some songs and hopefully got some money. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> they would have maybe given it to me to be quiet. That's maybe what they would have like, just shut up. <laughs> but no, God did it a different way. And if you would just trust God in your desperate situation, just trust him. He will always work it out because we sing about it. He's a good, good father. Amen. He's such a good, good father. In this story, we see that the woman literally has nothing. Just this tiny little amount, amount of oil. I wonder if she even knew she had it initially. Was she leaving it in reserve just in case? Maybe some of you have got reserves that we don't touch just in case. And, and, and God said to her, give me your last. God, her, God told her to pour out all she had even the little she had left. And then she went from having the little to absolutely nothing. Just think about that for a second. I've got a little bit left to cover my, my, uh, my, my uh, children, but that's all I've got. And, and God said, no, give me your last. Through the prophet Elijah. You know the one Elijah that, that sat and waited for the double portion from Elijah? I know we get them confu confused sometimes. Is it Elijah or Elijah? And we trip over that sometimes. Um, but Elijah says, give us your last. Trust me, not just with 99%, but 100%. And maybe today, not just in your finances, you've given the Lord 98% of your heart. And he says, give me everything. I want everything. Trust me with everything. I was thinking about this, the feeding of the 5,000. The, the food never stopped until all were fed. And guess what? They had plenty left over. Abundance. Smile at me. Say the word abundance. A desperate situation. The second point in this story is that the woman in, in verse 3 and 4 uh, she sought God. Through the prophet, she sought God. And when we are faced with a desperate situation, people, us, often turn to different solutions. Unfortunately, some of these are not healthy. Alcohol, drugs, isolation, choosing to do nothing in action or zoning out. Or financially, we, we turn to maybe more de debt and attempt to pull herself out of that hole. It says in Proverbs 3, uh, verses 5 and 6, to trust in the Lord with 50%, and that number exactly, your heart. Trust in the Lord with 50% of your heart, right? Keep the other 50% just in case you need to go off in a different direction. Trust Him with just half of your heart. And no, the Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, trust Him with all, all of your heart all of your heart. But God, I, I, I don't know how this will work its way out. No, trust me with all of your heart. Not just some, but say all. All. And then it says, do not lean on your own understanding. Do not lean, oh my, yeah, my goodness me, Lord. If only I would stop thinking on things myself. If only I would just surrender my own thoughts to you, then it would be okay. I would actually resolve things a lot quicker. Do you know that pilots, uh, when they're, they're learning, has anyone watched the new Top Gear movie? Anyone know, anyone want to own up to, like, is this a trick question? Am I allowed to answer? It's okay. I'm not asking for a trick. Like, no one's seen it. It was really good. I quite enjoyed it. Uh, but whilst uh, they're learning to become a pilot, they are instructed that's drummed into them to focus on the dials that are in front of them, not their own understanding. And they've done tests before that they've taken uh, new pilots up in, in the air and they've blindfolded them and they said, are we facing up or are we upside down? And they said, oh, we're facing up. And they were actually upside down because they were relying on their own understanding, what they felt and what they thought they knew. But they were instructed, always focus on the dials in front of you. Never think that you just know it. Listen, we've got our, our instruction manual right in front of us. Oh, I think it should go this way, Rob. Well, does the Bible say it should go this way? This is our instruction manual. If it's not in here, sorry, I can't even listen to it. Well, I'll maybe listen to you, but I'll instruct you back to the Word of God. 
So in the, in the current climate of where we are in the days just now, we've maybe got uh, uh, rumours, should I say, of uh, uh, cats up at different schools and all this sorts of stuff that's been going through all social media and stuff like that. Listen, we've got to rely on the Word of God. Amen. Let's get back to the truth and not maybe rumors that may be going around uh, different schools and things like that, which I'm told is unfounded, just so you know, in the hot of the press um, today. But it, we have to lean into the Word of God. That is our foundation place in all of our lives. Amen? Amen. Do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Let me say that again. In all of your ways, acknowledge Him. When you're making a cup of tea or coffee in the morning, guess what He's asking you to do? Acknowledge Him. Not just when you come to church and say amen. When you're driving here on a Sunday morning, guess what He's asking you to do? When you're walking to your work, guess what He's asking you to do? Acknowledge Him in all your ways. When you're on that fishing boat next week, David, guess what He's asking you to do? Acknowledge Him in all your ways. Wherever you are at, at the moment, acknowledge Him. Acknowledge Him when you're going to your bed at night. Acknowledge Him uh, when you're watching your TV. Acknowledge Him when you're flicking through Facebook. Uh, acknowledge Him in all your ways. Amen. And then the promise is what? And He will make your path straight. So as we acknowledge Him, and we were praying for this before the service, as we acknowledge Him, He makes our path straight. We're praying for divine appointments. That's what we're praying for, wasn't it, Gary? We were praying for divine appointments earlier on. Can I tell you, if you acknowledge Him in all your ways, you'll be in a divine appointment day after day after day after day. Because we're so in tune with God that we are presented. I was speaking to someone who's doing some work at, in a garden of one of the congregation. They parked up outside my house. I thought, well, here's a divine appointment. And I was able to say, it's time. Oh, I'm a backslidden Christian. I says, well, not anymore. You don't need to be. Come to church. Get yourself to church. We'll take you from a backslidden Christian to a loving Jesus straight down the line, acknowledging God in all your ways, Christian. Amen. Amen. The widow chose a great option. She chose to seek God. She went to the prophet Elijah, and God, through the prophet, gave her the next steps. Can I just give you some good news, church, today, that you maybe think, well, do I need to go to the prophet? No, you don't need to go to the prophet, because Jesus, if you have acknowledged him and made him your savior, lives inside you. He can speak directly to you. When did you last hear the Lord's voice? Have you heard his voice recently? Because he can speak directly to you. Am I saying that we don't need prophets? No. I believe fully in the five-fold ministry, and you'll be glad to hear that. <laughs> Joe, you'll be glad to hear it as he maybe watches this back. Um, I believe in the prophets, but God can speak to you as well. Amen? We don't need to go to another to hear God's voice. So here's what God told the widow to do. Go visit your neighbor. I wonder if, if this was actually an invitation for the neighbor to be a part of the miracle. The neighbor was just about to be a part of a, an amazing miracle. Maybe God can see us in our desperate situation so that it will be a witness to the power of God in your life when he performs a miracle in your life. I, I love the fact when you're in such a desperate place, there's nothing in your own mind, in your own hands you can do, and then you have to rely on God. I love that. I know, I know you're like, well, I don't like being in that situation, Rob, actually. <laughs> I love it because what happens is if you could do it in your own strength, God gets no glory. But when God does something and you know it's God, He gets what? Everything. He gets all the glory. And He's after His glory. Amen. He wants His glory back. Amen. Asks to get the jars, not just a few. God is setting the expectation in these verses. He says, listen, don't just get one or two. We don't just want to give you a little. We want to give you a lot. Say abundance with me, church. You're going to catch it today whether you like it or not. This was an expectation God was setting for extreme abundance for this family. They didn't know what was about to happen, but they were trusting in the Word of God. Amen. Did you know that we can restrict God's blessing? Did you know that if we don't keep our hearts open, the blessing can't keep flowing? 
We must keep our, our hearts open to the blessing of God. And we can restrict that. We saw that in the Scripture, that we restrict the flow. When we don't have enough jars, the flow stops. And in private, with you and your sons present and the door shut behind you, pour the oil. I love the in private stuff. I love shouting about miracles, but I like the in private stuff of prayer and seeking God. And I just wonder if she was looking at the miracle or she was worshiping Jesus or was she doing both? I mean, I'm thinking, I'm watching these jars being filled with oil and I'm thinking, what am I doing? Am I, am I excited about this? Am I like, wow, look at that, the oil's filling up and she only just had a little bit, but look at all these jars now that are full of oil. And is she thinking about what, what I can do with all this oil? I wonder how we can move forward. We don't need the prophet anymore because we've, we've done what he said, we'll do whatever we want with all this oil now, but she didn't do that. She went back to the prophet to hear what God had to say the next step was. Praise the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. I've lost my place. I'm just so excited. <laughs> the third point and the second to last is that she obeyed God. We've all been in situations that feel desperate. We seek God and, and He will tell us what to do. Yet sometimes, just sometimes, we choose not to do the very thing that God has asked us to do. And as a result, our miracle, let me say it this way, has not arrived. It's on its way, but it's not arrived. So why do we not obey God sometimes? Well, sometimes it's because we can't see the outcome. We, we can't see the way that God is going to move out in this situation, so we don't obey Him because we're scared, or we can't comprehend the possibility of the outcome happening. Could you imagine if He said, I'm actually going to tell you how this is all going to work out, how much doubt would have been in the woman's mind, in her heart? He didn't tell her that. He gave her step by step by step. Amen? So we need that faith to take the next step forward to move. I wonder if it was uncomfortable to ask the neighbor for the jars. What's the neighbor's going to think? Uh, this woman is off her rocker because she's asking for empty jars. What's she going to be able to do? She's doing one of these fun fair things where they get a, a ping pong ball and you have to flick it into the jars and it bounces about till it goes. What are they going to be doing with these jars, you know? I, I wonder if she felt uh, awkward explaining the need for the jars. I wonder if it was challenging to even believe that the oil of jars could miraculously multiply. I would be thinking all these things. <laughs> Yet she did as she was told. She obeyed God's voice. I wonder if there was something God has asked you to do that you haven't done yet uh, for Him. And I, I know that, uh, that there's always that opportunity for grace. And okay, there's grace. So if I don't do it this time, He'll give me another opportunity. You know, one of the hardest things to watch is when God asks you to do something and you don't do it. And He asks somebody really close to you and they do it. And then you watch it, the outcome. You're like, that was my blessing. And I've missed it because I didn't obey and I'm sure at that point you say, bless them, Lord. Thank you that they obeyed. I'm really happy for them. I'm sure you were th you'd think all those sorts of things. And my last point to you this morning uh, uh, from the Scripture in verses 6 and 7 is get ready for a miracle. Get ready for a miracle. Can you imagine being in the room with the widow and her two sons? Imagine them holding their breath as those jars are being filled. <gasps> Is this going to happen? Is it actually going to happen? Then the second one being filled, and then the third one being filled until they were all filled, until there was no jars left. God moved in a moment from struggling to surplus. In a moment, you don't know how it's going to happen. You don't know how it could ever happen. But in a moment, God can move things from struggling to surplus. Why? Because His Word says it's true, and I then believe it as truth. Not just parts of it. I don't believe that some of the Bible is for old times and some is for new times. No, I believe the Bible is true in its fullest form. Maybe not all of us do. That's okay. Paul Adamson agrees, and that's, that's fine. In a moment, God moved. In a moment, God changed the outcome. In a moment, He changed the narrative to move things forward. You see, you're thinking one outcome, God is thinking another. But only 
if we surrender to him, will we see it come to pass? Can you imagine seeing that miracle? Has anyone in this room seen God perform a miracle before? Sometimes I actually think that we're far too close to a miracle to actually even acknowledge we've seen it. Yvonne spoke about that during communion today. We sometimes are so close to it that we miss it. You know, it's, it's a bit like me with my hands in front of me. I know that you know that I've got my hands there. I know my hands are there, but I don't know that my hands are actually there because, I, is that my hands? I don't know if it's my hands because I'm so close to them until I pull them back and I can actually see my hands in front of me there. Oh, there's, yeah, my hands. Sometimes the miracle is so close to us that we don't see it. Can I just point out some miracles that you've maybe not acknowledged before? We are in this building today on a miracle. Some very hard work from Joe Ewan, some very hard work from Mike Kitchen, but we are in this building by a miracle. We own this building and paid very little money for this building because it was a miracle. It was a miracle. Somebody say amen. amen. That building next door in Harvest Center and all the people that have flown through there over many years of nearly 40, well, not quite 40 years, 2002 that we came into that building. Over many years, we've seen many people come through. That's a miracle that we have that building and it looks the way that it does. It's a miracle. Can I say that every single person in this room today is a miracle? You are a miracle that you're actually in this room. God placed something in your heart to be here today to hear this message. Listen, you are a miracle. I know what my life was like before I came to this church. Me being in this room today is a miracle. My wife can say amen. (laughs) It's a miracle. Listen, if there was anyone that was against the church, just like Saul before he became Paul and persecuting the church, that was me. I was slagging this church up. I can't even say the things that I used to say about this church and this people that came to this crazy church. I couldn't even tell you because you would be offended. I would have to repent for saying some of the things. I, I would, I would have to do, I mean, I'm happy to repent, that's okay. It's a miracle that we are here together. Listen, from a broad spectrum, a broad demographic, from teachers to doctors to uh, factory workers to farmers, you only find it in a church. You would never find this anywhere else because the, the foundation place, the leveling place for each one of us is Jesus. You see, we're all the same before Jesus. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter who you look like or what you look like or who you like or whatever you like. I don't care because it's about Jesus. And he's the miracle worker that we need today. Would you stand with me? A miracle. You see, God is just such a good God. He's such a good God. Think about the, the widow when she sought help from the prophet what was she really praying for well she wanted to eliminate debt and keep her sons yet God provided for her she went back and told she went back and told the man of God the prophet this is what's happened and he says well take the oil pay off your debts and live on the rest pay your debts and live on the rest Can we say that together? Live on the rest. Live on the rest. Live on the rest. Live on the rest. God met her current needs, but he set her up for the future. Do you know that God put the widow in the oil business? First mention of the oil business was this very scripture. Now I know that there was an oil business that made $33 billion last year. I don't know if it's dollars or pounds. I wonder if God's setting us up for abundance. Abundance. Say abundance. Abundance. El Shaddai, the God that is more than enough. Amen. So let me ask you the question. What does the oil represent? It's the anointing. It's the anointing. It is the Holy Spirit as well. It's also the right answer. But it wasn't the right answer for me today. That's next week's message. Thank you. You've spoiled it. It's the anointing. It's the anointing of God. It's the anointing of God. The Spirit of the Sovereign 
Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. Samuel, Joe was speaking about, is it 1 Samuel 16, where it says, go fill your horn with oil and go and anoint the king. Fill your horn. There's something in this season. And I didn't put the two together. It was Joe that did that, connected the two dots for me. There's something in this season about the oil of God washing over you. We receive the blood to cover us and cleanse us from our sin, but we can't stay in that place. We have to move forward with God and receive the anointing so that we can be the impact in society that God has called us to be. I'm so glad to see the people that are in this building today are here with us. It's no mistake that you're here. Let me say, whatever desperate situation you're facing in your life just now, will you choose to make the right choice and seek God first in this direction? Will you choose to obey Him? Will you choose to go from that struggling to surplus with Him in your life? Uh, If you're a business owner, would you just raise your hand? If you're a business owner, if you're a business owner, raise your hand. Come on, right up. Don't be shy about it, Daddy. If you didn't put your hand up, I was coming and knock up there as well. Yeah, raise your hand. If you're around those people in a second, I just want you to go to them and we're going to pray uh, for them. I just felt like God was saying when I was praying for you uh, yesterday that the Lord is preparing a path for you. He's preparing a path for you is what the Lord is saying. So if you're around those people with their hands up, would you just go and lay hands on them? Look around you. Keep your hand up. Keep your hand up, business owners. Keep your hand up, business owners. And I'm coming to get you. Until you've got someone beside you to pray for you, just take your hand down then. And we're praying for a path for them in in their current season. uh, The Lord just spoke about a path uh, that he's preparing for you uh, in this season. Let's just pray over them. Pray over them for that path that the Lord has given for them to walk in. In Jesus' name, Father, we just declare over our business owners today in Jesus' name. We want to thank you for them and we declare that path for them to be straight um, to, to, to be smooth in Jesus name Father we want to thank you that you give wisdom from heaven to make the right choices in the mighty name of Jesus not the easy choice but the right choice in Jesus name Father we just speak that abundance in and over their lives in Jesus name and all God's people said amen amen